Hey everyone, Cynics here, and this might look like a strange title for a video, but I wanted to talk about how we can use graffiti style art to improve all aspects of our artistic abilities. So I should just throw out a disclaimer that I am not a graffiti artist. I don't have much of a history with it, so some of my terminology and things like that might be off, but I'm going to be approaching it with the eyes of a concept artist or illustrator. So there are going to be four main topics I want to cover. The first one will be control or how we can use graffiti style to improve our physical abilities. The second one is tangents or how we can use this to improve our observational abilities. The third one is perspective or improving our mental abilities. And finally, the fourth one is function or improving our illustrations. So I think that's about it. Let's hop right into control. I think I've talked about control a bit in the past, and the video about doing art warm-ups was mainly about control-oriented stuff, but I'll just go over it real fast again. So a lot of people will draw just with their wrist, they'll let their arm lay flat on the paper, and they'll just move their wrist back and forth, and we want to get away from that as much as possible. Because uh, doing that just kind of limits our range of motion and it limits what we can do. So instead of that, we're going to try to draw with our whole arm starting from our shoulder downward and not really using our wrist that much. So you can see when I use my whole arm, I can make nice long straight lines in any direction. And when I use my wrist, this is about the length of the line I can make. You can see it's pretty short and around the ends of the line, it usually starts to lose control. Uh, the same thing goes for like a spiral or a round shape where it loses control once you get to the extremes. Uh, but if you use your whole arm, there's no limit and you can make huge spirals and go anywhere you want on the page. So that's just a quick recap of what control means to us. It's really the only physical aspect of drawing. So I'm going to do a quick little graffiti tag thing and I'm going to focus on using my arm. I'm going to focus on being smooth and I'm going to focus on using fast lines because uh, that's what I want to accomplish with my control. I want to be smooth, fast, and use my arm. And those are going to be my physical things. So you can see here I'm writing the word control. And for the most part, I'm hitting the lines I want to hit and it worked out all right. I'm just kind of zooming through this because this is a really basic kind of graffiti example and it's really not much to talk about. Uh, you can see it's a very bubbly style and a lot of the letters are kind of interlapping into each other. Um, but yeah, the nice big round bubbly type letters are really, <laughs> are really great for practicing your muscle control. Up next, I want to talk about tangents. And when I say tangents, I'm really referring to the lines of an object within a composition. So for instance here, I'm making a little rectangle and I'm gonna pretend it's a poster, a red poster, and I'm gonna label it P. And I'm just gonna use a photography example. Let's pretend we wanna take a picture of our red poster and we also wanna have in our picture this blue box, which I labeled a B. So you can see here my first attempt at lining up a picture. I have these overlapping lines on the left side of both the poster and the box. And that really takes away from some of the aesthetics of say the, the composition of our little picture. So let's try again. And this time let's take it from way off to the side. And this time uh, we have our blue box off to the left of our poster. And you can see we have parallel tangents, which is definitely not as bad as the overlapping one, uh, but it's still, it could be aesthetically better. Um, and to make things more complicated, let's say we don't just want the poster in the blue box, let's throw in a green lamp. So I'm <laughs> adding that there. And we're gonna see what we can do with that. And this is the third type of no-no mistake that I'm gonna talk about. And it has to do with when an angle of something touches a line, like pretty much touches it exactly. And I'm just gonna call that a kissing tangent. I don't know, there's probably a better name for it. Maybe there's a photography name, but in my eyes, I'm just gonna call it a kissing tangent. And that's just when the angle, the perfect angle just lines up with a line and it just, I don't know, it's, it's unsettling to see that. And you can also see examples of 
um, overlapping and parallel tangents in this single piece. So it's just a mess altogether. The bottom of the lamp is overlapping with the top of the box and all kinds of horrible things are going on. So how can we improve our composition? Uh, let's try to avoid those tangents. So no kissing tangents. You can see my lamp is now overlapping the poster a little bit and the blue box is kind of angled in a way so we can have it crossing up into the poster. I'm not obscuring it too much, but just breaking up the lines so they're not overlapping in any, in any disgusting ways. Um, and this is one of the main crits when people ask me to critique photography, because I don't know a whole lot about photography, but what I can tell them is where their tangents could be better. Uh, so let's just draw a few boxes over here. And this is really where you get into the graffiti side of things, because you look at these boxes and they're just all over the place and there's no real tangents going in the same direction. And that makes it very aesthetically pleasing. And the interesting thing about this is uh, letters in general are very boxy. They're meant to be confined into boxes, you know, typesetting and everything like that. All letters are made to kind of be boxy. So with graffiti, we want to take away all those parallel and kissing tangents and all that ugly stuff. And we want to make each letter kind of aesthetically interesting in its own way. And by the way, parallel tangents can be okay, as I showed in that E letter. You want them to go through on single objects, such as one letter. If I'm drawing just one letter, uh, the parallel tangents can help really sell that as a singular object. Uh, but I don't want those parallels interacting with other objects because then it just flattens everything. Uh, so our goals for this little graffiti are no kissing, no overlaying lines and we want to be very observant because that's really what this is going to come down to. Can we observe all the tangents that are going on in a piece? So I'm using a style that is very line heavy, very angular. Um, I guess it would be considered like wild style among graffiti artists. Uh, but you know, obviously I don't know much about that stuff. So I'm just saying something like that. Um, but I'm using as many different lines and, as, and angles as I can to try to really sell this idea that tangents need to be avoided. So each letter, I'm just kind of going down the list in the word tangent, and each letter I want to avoid it from crossing through the angle of a previous letter, and I want it to avoid it from being parallel with the previous letter. And so kind of keeping those observations in mind, you should be able to get an interesting little graffiti uh, tag. Yeah, I'll say tag. I think that's the proper word. Uh, so you should be able to get an interesting design or tag going on. And I'm kind of pretty boring when it comes to putting letters in front of or in back of each other. You can see they pretty much all just move down the line in back of each other. Uh, but anyway, since I had this nice little purple outline, I thought it would be fun to throw in a nice Laker gold on top of it. And that just makes it pop all the more. So I did a little quick outline too, just to really sell those tangents. I can still see some bad tangents here and there, but for the most part, we did a pretty good job with this one of keeping our tangents aesthetically interesting. So the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be perspective. And this is really something that I'm sure you already know a lot about. Uh, basically putting things into three-dimensional space. So I'm just doing a quick example here with an arrow and a box. And you can see next to the box, I flattened it out to make it look like it's going away from us into the distance. And with the other one, I'm making it look like it's falling maybe toward us. And uh, doing the same thing with arrows just real fast. For some reason, I find arrows to be deceptively difficult to draw in all perspectives. There's something about it which just requires a slight accuracy, uh, which I think makes them really good fodder for practicing uh, perspective stuff. Uh, much more than a box, which is kind of the standard thing you might use when you're first learning art to practice uh, drawing things in three-dimensional space. Uh, but arrows are where you really kind of can improve your abilities, at least I would say. Uh, but now I'm going to move on to what graffiti is all about, and that is doing these letters. 
So you can see here I drew a simple nice boxy M. And now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the arrow on the box. I'm going to put it down so it's lying on its back. And that instantly makes it far more interesting. So I think I'll also try doing it from like a side angle where it looks like the side of it's going off into the distance. And that also, once again, looks incredibly more interesting than our boring flat M. So I really feel like this is a great mental exercise to practice. Whenever you don't know what to do, maybe you're having some artist block or whatever, just sit down and start drawing stuff in crazy perspectives. You know, practice the fundamentals and you can do it in fun ways. Practicing doesn't have to be boring. You can create some interesting art with your practice stuff. Um, so moving stuff in three-dimensional space, it's it's always useful. Even for me, I'm not that great at it sometimes. So I'll always go back and start drawing arrows in different directions anytime I have an excuse to. And I think this one's kind of getting off to the side of the page. So I'm going to have to center that anyway. But let's, let's go into our little list of things we want to keep in mind while we're doing our perspective-based graffiti. So I want each one to be 3D or at least have a drop shadow to really sell it that it's, you know, in three dimensional space. And I also want it to have a dynamic angle if at all possible. Uh, so I really tried a lot of things. The first thing I tried was to write the word perspective with each letter having a crazy dynamic angle toward the viewer. Uh, but I didn't really like that that much or maybe it was just getting too complicated and I didn't know where to go with it. Uh, so I also tried writing the word angle with some crazy perspective stuff thrown in. Uh, but in the end, since perspective was such a long word, um, I decided to write the word angle in a very basic way. Uh, there's very minimal perspective and, you know, I guess I was just not feeling comfortable enough with trying anything too crazy because you still have to worry about the, the two previous topics, which were control and tangents. And tangents is definitely the one that gets uh, the most complicated when you start doing crazy perspective stuff. So it's hard to keep track of everything, but that's what makes practicing graffiti art so beneficial. It gives you a nice cross section of different artistic skills to work on. Uh, so anyway, you can see my angle here, and I made it a nice 3D shape by dropping it down into the background a little bit. You can see they're nice and blocky. Uh, but I think that's about it for my first three topics. And the last topic I'm actually going to come back to later. Uh, but now that we've worked on these different exercises, I think it's time to just have some fun and start doing some crazy graffiti using what we've learned so far. So the first thing you'll probably want to do if you start messing around with graffiti style art is write your name. So that's what I had to do. I had to write cynics and I had to make it as interesting as possible. And one of the great things about doing this digitally is you can quickly do your line work on one layer so you can just preserve transparency if you want and you can change the color real easily or you can fill it in um, underneath the layer with some nice uh, basic flat color or you can add a little gradient to it, maybe a little sparkles. You can add any pattern you want. Maybe a nice, I don't know, Louis Vuitton pattern or something would be amusing if you hand painted it. Uh, but that would be really cool and you can also mess around with your outer strokes and things like that to really make it pop and give it some graphic appeal. So after that I thought, hmm, what would be more interesting than my name? And there's something I hadn't thought of trying before and that is to do words in other language. And how about I try to write something in Chinese? And I'm sure someone who sees this is probably going to cringe when they see my horrible Chinese. I don't even know if it's legible. I know what it's supposed to say, but I'd be curious to see if anyone can actually read what I'm writing in Chinese. So I thought for this one, I would just make a nice yellow and red theme. You know, that seems very appropriate. And once again, I'm just preserving transparency and using separate layers to get the colors nice and simple and flat and changeable. And the other thing I wanted to do was add a nice three dimensional uh, shape to things. So I'm going to pick a vanishing point, And that's a good way to do real accurate three dimensional stuff. 
pick a vanishing point and use it for all of the letters. So every single edge of the letter is going to go toward that vanishing point. And that's going to give you a nice, super clean looking three dimensional effect. So I'm pretty happy with how that one came out. And there's one other thing that I didn't really mention, and that's the idea of theming. Um, it's interesting, at least to me, to take that the word itself and try to theme a style of graffiti out of it. So say your word was, you know, round, you'd probably do a lot of really bubbly round shapes. Or your word was sharp, you'd probably do a lot of real sharp angles. Or say your word was hands, you'd probably make it out of hands. At least that's what I kind of did, except I did it in a really lazy and sloppy fast way. So a lot of the anatomy is really poor. So don't judge me too harshly on my poor anatomy. And as you can see, I also tried writing the word bone because I get to do that in a nice bone texture and make it look like it's made out of bones. So that's kind of fun and amusing. And all the while, even though I'm having fun with these weird themes, I'm still trying to keep in mind things like tangents and control and perspective to make it look nice and beautiful, or at least as beautiful as I can. So while I was working on this, I decided to go on Twitter and ask people what their favorite words are. And um, I didn't tell people what I was going to be using them for, and I got some interesting responses. Uh, but of course, what I wanted to use them for was to make interesting random graffiti art. So you can see, though, a lot of the responses are just hilariously long words or just inappropriate stuff. But nonetheless, I thought I would mess around with it a little bit. So obviously the word flabbergasted is a bit too long and I'm lazy when it comes to super long words. So I thought I would just try the word flab instead. And of course that means something completely different, but I thought it would be amusing. So here is my graffiti art for the word flab. And you can see I tried to make it nice and flat, flabby looking. I guess that's a word, yeah. Nice and flabby and fat looking. And I made the little um, the little empty spots in all the letters look like belly buttons. And it just has this weird body vibe to it. Um, and to make things worse, I decided to add some nice redness where you get those nice mounds of fats. Because obviously you get some redness uh, where skin is really thick. And um, I also added some hair because why not? Uh, anyway, the next word I saw was the word mecha, so that's a pretty good word, and I thought about doing it in crazy mech letters, but in the end I decided to just go with a simple graffiti style so it wasn't too illegible or complicated. Because that's another thing you want to avoid is unnecessary complications, and that's really true in all forms of art. Uh, so that went okay, I kind of liked how that turned out. And at that point, I was thinking about trying more of them, but in the end, I'd just better move on. So I wrote the word bloodshed real fast because that was the third response I got, but I didn't even do it in graffiti art. I was just practicing my control real fast. And if you're too lazy to do complicated 3D graffiti art, you can still just write words and try to write them creatively and just having a nice flow to it. Anyway, I think it's about time I move on to the final topic and that is function. So you can see here, I have one of my vehicle paintings that I did for the Truckin' Around series. And it looks like I've saved it in a bad folder because it's all dusty and dirty and looks like it's been dinged up a bit. But I think to add some extra personality to this, we're gonna try adding some graffiti to the side of it. So I'm just going to take some of the art we did and see if I could plaster it to the side of this thing. And this was actually my favorite of the bunch, and it'll work out nicely because this mini vehicle design kind of feels like it would belong in an Asian country like China. So you can see this is one of the rare times I'm going to be using Photoshop instead of Painter. And that's just because Photoshop is much better at handling image manipulation type stuff. So I'm just going to put this, uh, try to size it up correctly. And then I'm going to use the distort transform function and just kind of quickly make all the corners of the boxes look like they're in proper perspective. And luckily this vehicle has a really obvious perspective since it's so boxy. So it should be relatively easy to line things up. 
and I'm even going to cut out chunks of the graffiti and move them slightly to match the paneling on the side of our vehicle. You can see one part cuts downward slightly, so I'm going to angle that properly. And the other part is inlaid slightly, so I'm just going to angle that back as well. And once again, we're just using our mental abilities of perspective type stuff and three-dimensional space in order to just eyeball that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And once I have that how I like it, I'm going to take everything back into Painter so I can just paint over things quickly and make things look nice and pretty once again. So I'll just connect those pieces that I chopped up and add some lighting effect so it looks like it's catching highlights from the sky. And I think that should be about it. Um, obviously, you can mess with it as much as you want. I'll add a little bit of paint drippings down the side of the van just to give it more extra super personality. Well, I think that's about it for the video, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a bit of a weird topic, but hopefully people that didn't like graffiti art might like it a little more, and people that did like it don't like it any less because of my video. Uh, so thanks for watching, and if you do experiment with some graffiti art, be sure to send it to me on Twitter or post it on the Facebook page or whatever. I'm always checking those places, so uh, show me what you do, and I will be glad to see it. Alright, see you guys.